All right, you guys, it's Ross the Fig Boss. We're looking at the figs today. We're here on the west side of the property. You could see that the trees have already got hit by a frost. Um, maybe one or two light frosts, but this is enough to actually get the leaves to start to crumple up like this. Uh, pretty soon, once we get something a bit more severe, um, all the leaves will fall off the tree. But what is for certain is that the leaves now have gotten hit and they're gonna start actually dying back um, very, very slowly over time is that very soon the tree will start to uh, reject the leaves that got hit by that frost and uh, that'll be the end of it, no more leaves. But there are some leaves lower down on the tree that uh, were protected a bit more uh, from the canopy up above. So the frost tends to settle and if there isn't enough of a frost or it's not as severe, you end up having some leaves down below or even just some trees down below that don't get hit by that frost and aren't affected by it as a result. Um, so we still need another, another frost or two, depending on the severity, uh, before I would just say that these trees are gonna be completely defoliated, before the trees are completely dormant. As of right now, even though our frost was really about two to three, three-ish nights ago, I would say. Um, we still actually are getting figs on the trees. And people just might not believe that to be true, but actually the frost, even if you look at other fruits that ripen around this time of the year, like the persimmons I have, when they get hit by that frost, it actually kind of speeds up the ripening a bit within the, tr within the fruits. And the fruits will continue to art like almost artificially ripen with the help of that frost. Um, now, this is a fig that we're gonna look at today called the Zora's Dark. And I know we've talked a lot about this fruit in the past, but I found this one on the tree, didn't even know it was there. Um, I have really have not been paying attention too much to the fruits lately as it's been so cold and as I don't really expect a ton. We had so many fruit flies this year that ruined a lot of fruits. There was some bird damage here and there and it just, you know, I've also got a, a life and other things going on, guys, that I really wasn't paying attention. And just so happens I, I come across this tree today, going around to all the trees and seeing what's what's there, what's ripe, uh, if there is anything ripe, if the fruit flies are active now that it's warmer. It's a bit warmer out now today. It was almost 70 during the day. Um, <clears throat> and I found this uh, Azores Dark. And now actually in the middle of filming this video, I also see a campanari here. So we have two dried fruits of two of my favorite varieties, uh, campanari and Azores Dark. They look rather similar, I must say. Um, however, neither one of them actually, and I know I mentioned the, uh, the tidbit there about the frost kind of artificially ripening these fruits, but I don't think either one of them got hit by a frost. Looking at where the tree was over here on the Campanieri. The leaves are down below, the fruit is down below, and the leaves are unaffected. So I imagine the fruit was unaffected as well. Same thing here with this Azores Dark. It's just a very, very light frost up here at the top. Uh, but this portion back towards this way, for whatever reason, did not get hit. So I imagine maybe the frost is helping to some degree, but I don't think it's really that significant. I just think personally, it's been rather dry here. Even though the temperatures have been rather cold, these figs are gonna continue to ripen all the way up until they're dormant. And that's the beauty of an in-ground fig tree. And here's the beauty of these two varieties is that they, well, because it's been dry, they are going to start to dry up on the tree. And that's really one of the biggest reasons why I love these two varieties. I think it's a little bit easier for things to dry up on the tree around this time of the year. You know, as we get into the fall, um, believe it or not, you can find very dry periods. I've also seen the total opposite where in October, it could just rain throughout the entire month. So we, we have found a dry period in the last month, month and a half or so. Um, and things for that reason, are easier to dry on the tree than in other situations. And because these two varieties have that capability, 
they have that characteristic of something that will actually start to shrivel on the tree or even dry completely on the tree like this campaneri uh in august was pretty much totally dried on the tree it had those really awesome cork tints not just shriveling mind you it was showing cork tints to where it would actually turn into a dried fruit uh really not that far away from the time i had picked it so i want to what I really wanted to do actually in this video was talk about Azores Dark. I didn't want to talk about Campaneri, but I'm going to cut them both open for you guys anyway. Here are the two fruits. I know we talked a lot about Azores Dark, especially recently. I compared it to Conde, which is another Azores, another uh, hardy Chicago type, excuse me, that I have here in the ground. Um, it's actually to the left. You can see on the Azores Dark, it's on the right. And you might think, oh wow, Azores Dark, it should be dark, but it's not. It's really not that dark of a fig, typically, um, especially if it's a bit shaded. Um, it won't really turn that dark. Um, also, I find that it just, for a hardy Chicago type, it just doesn't really get that dark compared to the others. It's just a lighter purple um with the green undertones you see there and then campanari is here on the left which typically is yellow and it'll start to turn gray or purple get those purple stripes light purple um, as it ripens let me do the um campanari first because i want to talk briefly about that and then i'll move into azores dark which is really what again i wanted to make this video on this is not the right knife a serrated knife for a dried fruit like this <laughs> it's kind of a bad idea look at that though that's pretty i hope it's not fermented that looks so good truly i did also have a dried fruit recently of paradiso from uh, bode which was out of this world good it would have been nice i think to compare all of these let me try this Doesn't smell fermented. It looks a little bit fermented, oddly enough. The pulp does get dark red as it as it tends to ripen like this. <laughs> wow. Amazing. Really, really spectacular. I mean, this is as good as the best persimmons I ripen here. And that's why I love persimmons so much. And you can really tell when you when you get a ripe persimmon especially an American. I really like the American persimmons because the outside skin is so thick and chewy. I wouldn't say thick. I would say chewy and gooey. The inside's gooey, but the, the skin is chewy and it gets this really awesome consistency and date-like flavor to it or raisin-like flavor. This kind of has that same thing. The skin has really started to shrivel and become very, very chewy. And then the inside is just pure and utter jam. This is really, in my opinion, this is why I grow figs, just for these little experiences. How insane is that? By the way, this is from an in-ground tree, and I just think you'll see this more consistently, and the fruits will typically be of a better quality uh, in the ground like this, even though it's been so cold. I mean, it literally, I've been having to wear jackets um, hats and gloves you know uh, at night it's been in the 30s the low 30s for the last four nights in a row all right here's the azores dark let's cut this open what i really wanted to talk about was a little bit on this variety because i i just you know people saw that i really liked this fruit years ago and then went crazy for it and everyone's like oh i got azores dark everyone's like oh i have this fruit you know And I just think that, yes, the Seo Miguel Roxo thing was a big mix up. Holy crap, guys. Holy crap. <laughs> Look at this. Ooh. Look at that. The honey, the nectar, 
has solidified down there at the bottom. That looks like pure and utter candy. I don't know about you guys. That looks like fig candy. Why do we need candy, guys? When we have this. Whew. Oh my goodness, that looks so good. I'm sorry. Uh, you just have to admire nature when it does something like this. You just can't... That's the thing, right? Why do we have all these pharmaceuticals and, um, and candy and different foods when we have it all in nature? Why did we go through all that to create this crap to then make money? It's better than any candy I know of. I'm going to be honest. It's, some of the figs are even like cake. You know, when I talk about the Col de Doms, um, it's like a, the perfect pastry. You know, pastelier, when you translate pastelier from, what is it, French or Italian? I can't remember. If, I think it's an Italian word. It, when you translate it, it means paste, pastry or pasty. Pastry or pastry. Which it really is. I mean, the, the figs become so thick and awesome that uh, it's just a wonder to me. It really is. So let me, let me try this. Very, very similar to the other one. Not as chewy of a skin, but the only difference I can really detect is that this one has a much more intense berry flavor. Whereas uh, Campaneria, I just don't think the berry flavor is so high on that one. It's not as, it is maybe you could say a little fruity, but really it's more of, I would can say a, a figure, sugary fig flavor. Whereas Azores Dark really does have you know, more of that berry. It's like a strawberry, a little bit of Concord grape in there, and of course the fig. So for me, I'm, you know, I'm blown away by these two fruits. This is just such a, you know, again, this is why I grow these, these, these things here, guys. This is it. And I, I know that we spend a lot of time and, 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 and hours researching these things, but at the end of the day, it's and you know all the videos I do and all that and all the tastings I do, not many of them care, compare to the, the figs I just ate. To be truth, totally honest with you, usually the best tasting fruit is the one that's the most ripe. And when they're like that, they're insane. So here's my Azores Dark. It's been in the ground for I th um, about three years now. This is their third. This is the third season of this planting that we have. And you can see I've planted at the same exact time an LSU Champagne right next to it. And then this is an LDA, Long de Doot. Both of which were in the same sized container. And I might even be able to argue, I think I could argue, yeah, I, I do, that Azores Dark had the larger root system of the three trees. It was the most mature. It had been in a pot the longest. Um, not to say it was root bound because I don't think it was pretty sure it was in a fabric pot if I'm not mistaken. But if you look back, if I just back up for a second, look at the difference in size. It's like five feet, four feet, probably about four feet. Um, cause these trees, they're probably about eight feet in height, cut them all the way back to six to 10, uh, six to 12 inches they grow eight feet in one season. I mean, they could have grew even more if I didn't pinch them at different times. I imagine they'd be over 10 feet. But uh, Azores Dark is such a difference in height. And what, is, what does that mean exactly? Is that Azores Dark just doesn't have the vigor that the other two figs have. Look at the diameter of this wood. The diameter of LSU Champagne, by which, by the way, it's still fruiting, and it had just a ridiculous amount of fruits on it. But if I take off some of these leaves down here, we get a better a view of this, these trunks. They're huge. But if you saw the, the trunks down here at the base of the Azores Dark, they're just not as thick. And if you measure the diameter of the wood and you compare that, between all the varieties, 
you know which ones have the most vigor. And Zor's Dark just isn't vigorous. And I've heard people say this in the past about Azor's Dark, that it is vigorous. And this is kind of why I wanted to talk about it, is because people, in the beginning when I really liked this fruit, this variety, and I was really recommending it to people and saying that it was a better hardy Chicago type, um, people were like, oh, we gotta find this thing immediately. And I, my tree wasn't growing very fast, and I said that for years. And I had trouble propagating it, or let's say making many copies of it, because I, I couldn't get it out to people quick enough. And then finally people realized that Seo Miguel Roxo is the same thing as Azores Dark. Talking to the person I got it from and then the person he got it from, uh, we confirmed that that is true, that Seo Miguel Roxo and Azores Dark are the same thing. In fact, it was labeled Azores Dark from the person I got it from. Um, which turn, turns out later on, I think, was somewhat of a mistake because the person that he got it from, so two generations, I guess, before me, um, he was calling it Seo Miguel Roxo, and then there was a Seo Miguel White, which is either, you could say it's either Azores Dark or Azores White, um, but the Azores Dark, you know, was, was the label on the tree that I received and what it was called at one time. So it's not like someone made up the name for this particular fruit. Now, this does beg the question though, because as I've said, people tried to find this particular fruit. They tried to find Seo Miguel Roxo. There was even other figs just with the name Azores Dark, just floating around and whatever. And uh, I always just kept thinking to myself, you know, I hope that these people really have the right one. I never confirmed, I never grew a Seo Miguel Roxo side by side to really see if there was any differences between the two. But as I uh, kept seeing more and more people talk about Azores Dark, as more people started to acquire, or they acquired Seo Miguel Roxo, some people just said that their tree is a super vigorous variety and it puts out a lot of fruit. I would agree that it puts out a lot of fruit. It's very precocious. It doesn't need a lot of light to set the fruits, no matter how old it is. However, it's not a vigorous variety. I mean, as I just showed you, it's quite a big difference in the diameter of the wood, huge difference in the height of the trees. Um, even this right here, Moro de Caneva, which is towering over top of it, um, Yet people claim that they have a Seo Miguel Roxo or, or something to that effect that is vigorous. So either they're incorrect in their assumption or they're incorrect in their observation that it act in actuality it's not vigorous or they just don't have the wrong, they have the wrong variety. They don't have the right thing. Which is uh, something I just think people should really be more aware of. Um, that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that people definitely have the wrong variety. I'm just saying that if you think your Seo Miguel Roxo is vigorous or your Azores Dark is vigorous, there's a chance you just may not have the real deal. Now, if you got it from me or you got it from somebody that has a lineage of trees from me, well, then you're good, you know, uh, or you should be good, assuming everything was labeled correctly from those different people. I've spread it out to a number of growers over time and of course, I'm sure they have been spreading, you know, their cuttings and, and their trees around from that particular tree uh, to other people. But, you know, when I, again, when I started selling this variety, it was so strange to me where, how many people had just suddenly popped up that they had the variety. Uh, you know, I had received the variety from somebody who didn't even want it. It was trash to him. The person above him who, he, who gave it to him I don't think he really spread out that variety to many individuals. So it just seems odd to me that all of a sudden people just have this other Azores Dark, you know? Um, and of course, people may even end up, you know, evaluating this particular variety um, based on something that's not true. So I just wanted to make, not that I'm saying that this is exactly 100% is what's happening, because people are gonna read it like that, what I'm saying is that you should be aware, you should be conscious and 
Um, do your due diligence is really what I'm saying. I'm not saying that all of them are wrong. I'm not saying all of them are right. Um, I'm saying there's probably a number of people who I would imagine might have a mislabeled tree. Do your due diligence. And as you, you should always, when you sell varieties or spread varieties to other people, you really should confirm it before you know if it's true. Now, if it's a trade, then that's a different thing. And you could be a little bit more lenient because you know the person. Eventually you figure out, you know, if indeed it is, if it is true or if it's not true to type, you let that person know that you traded to. And eventually, you know, they're gonna fix it hopefully on their end as well. And then of course the problem doesn't lead to something like this where I have to mention it in this video, you know? Um, so anyway, that's my point. That's really the biggest thing I wanted to mention is like, uh, First off, it is the best hardy Chicago type that I have tried and continue to trial other ones. It just is above and beyond the others. Um, I think it tastes even better now that it's in the ground. I think it tastes, the better it tastes, the, the more ripe it typically is, the drier it is, the, um, the more it starts to dry on the tree, the more the flavor intensifies. So even somebody who's reviewing the fruit and doesn't pick the fig properly, you're just not gonna get all of the qualities right within the fruit um, you're just not going to know the beauty of this variety and we did that this year when we we tasted five of the hardy chicago types side by side we also talked about it when we tasted azores dark versus conde and we just mentioned in those videos that they have to be ripe they have to be super super ripe to really pick up those differences in the flavor and in the texture that fig that i showed you is well beyond ripe. Um, so you don't have to get it to that point. <laughs> That's a nice huge bonus, I think, if you can get it to that point or any of the hardy Chicago types. But at least for me, you know, that's really what I wanted to make you guys aware of is the vigor. And then again, all the other things we mentioned. Uh, here's just, I guess, a quick photo of the leaves. I'm sure somebody might be interested. <clears throat> but there it is. Man, we're already at 22 minutes for this one, huh? This has got the typical sword leaf. Typical sword. Where you have the handle down here, and then you have the sword up in the middle. Uh, jagged edges through this middle lobe. And that's, I guess, what you should be looking for from an in-ground tree. So something that has higher vigor, because sometimes in a pot, they don't have high vigor, or I should say less vigor. They definitely change their leaf pattern quite a bit from when you plant it in the ground versus when you have it in a container. I do have myself an air layer down here. This is always nice to put air layers on these, uh, on these trees, make myself more copies. Uh, it'd be nice to have one in a pot. I don't have one in a pot anymore. I sold them all. But anyway, guys, that was uh, Azores Dark. That was Campaneri. That was a little bit on each one. We talked about dried fruits. Uh, we talked about why we do this. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. We'll see you for the next one. Hit that subscribe button, please. And then also consider uh, subscribing on our, our blog, figboss.com. You just go down there at the bottom of the page, put in your email and you'll be notified every time we put out a new video. Aren't these figs something, man? Look at that, just one more shot. There is a difference in the color of the pulp. The Zor's Dark is much more of a ruby red and then the uh, Campaneri is almost brown on the inside. Almost amber, I guess. All right, guys. We'll see you for the next one.